Hello, this is your Mr. Security 702, and today I am responding to Urban Elf's video, What is Occam's Razor? in which he asks three questions. One, what is Occam's Razor? Two, is it appropriate to use Occam's Razor? And three, if yes, why? This response is an answer to these questions and as always, references in the Dealey McBob. In science, Occam's razor is a statement which says that the simplest answer is usually, and that's the key word here, usually, the best answer. I will give two examples. One where the simplest answer is true, and one where the simplest answer is not true. In the 17th century, there were two competing models of the solar system. The well-accepted geocentric model of the solar system, which places the Earth in the cen uh, center of the solar system, and the heliocentric model, which places the Sun at the center of the solar system. The geocentric model is a more complicated one because it requires a system of wheels within wheels within wheels to describe the observed phenomena in the sky, including but not limited to the phases of Venus and the fact that Mars seemed to go forwards at times and backwards at times. The heliocentric model, however, solves the problem of severe complexity as well as taking into account these observed phenomena. It places the Sun at the center of the solar system, which allows for circular planetary motion to describe these anomaly anomalies without the complexities of wheels within wheels. A place where Occam's razor does not hold is the plum pudding model of an atom. Back in the later, uh, back in the early 1900s, four things were known about the atom, at least that is relevant in this video. One, atoms have a positively charged portion. Two, atoms have a negatively charged portion. Three, the positively charged portion vastly outweighs the negative portions. Four, the atoms are generally neutral in charge. So, the first hypothesis of what the atom looks like was the plum pudding model. The atoms in this model was this positive mud uh, pudding like stuff with a lot of negatively charged specks in it like the raisins in pl uh, plum pudding however in 1910 the gold leaf experiment has proven this hypothesis wrong the setup for this experiment was to hammer a gold sheet to the thickness of only a few atoms and place it in the center of a detector alpha particles were shot at it from one side and lo and behold there was a scattering effect of the alpha particles this completely dismantled the plum pudding model shortly thereafter the modern model of an atom appears because of it with this said i do believe it should be you uh, with this said, I do believe that Occam's razor should be used in science, but only to be tested and retested. If it holds true, hammer out the edges, smooth it out, as with the heliocentric model of the solar system. If not, then a new model should be fashioned from the data collected, as with the model of the atom. This is the basis of scientific knowledge. 
I do have to add the cautionary statement of any scientific statement based upon Occam's razor. Indeed, every scientific statement ever has to be closely studied and scrutinized, lest science fails. The reason why I believe it should be used is that in all scientific pursuits, there needs to be a starting point. And what better starting point is there than the easiest uh, hypothetical explanation? Until next time, this is your Mr. Security, signing out.